April 2019, a group of 11 exceptional Aggies took on a project that some would say is impossible. Today, though, in 2021, the project is still ongoing. And okay, so how did this start? Uh, where did the retro rocket come from? <laughs> uh, no, I've, I've worked for the uh, International Ocean Drawing Program there in the research park, Texas A&M, for 40 years. One of the projects I was doing for the, uh, the, the, the Ocean Drawing Program was uh, they asked me to, to create a, a, a high-tech saw station, and I, I took about a year and created this uh, saw station that they could process core through. Well, they were so excited with the results. Uh, they decided to give me a little bit of a bonus, uh, merit uh, bonus. And, uh, you know, unbeknownst to me, uh, on my next paycheck, I had an additional $1,000. So I thought, wow, I got to do something crazy with this money. You know, this is like money that's just falling out of the sky. And uh, and I own Whole Blue Diner. So I thought, I'll just get something crazy to hang out at Whole Blue Diner. So I was kind of looking around. And uh, anyway, park got dismantled and this carousel rocket got disassembled and one of at least one of them ended up in this junkyard that this guy found. Uh, what do you want for the rocket? I said, yeah, a thousand bucks. I thought, oh, it's fake. Jeez. Oh, so Rick and I are friends just from living together in College Station and we got to know each other through mutual friends. And um, one day he text, he emailed me a picture of this rocket that he had found. And, and he collects a lot of memorabilia and 60s and 50s kind of memorabilia. And he was just really excited because he had found it. He had no idea what he was going to do with it, but he had it. And he had it on his trailer. Um, and then Rick and I sometimes go back and forth over whose idea it was, but together we came up with this idea of, you know, turning it into a, a flight simulator where someone could actually sit <laughs> in it. So when we started this semester, uh, we inherited a model, a set of plans that was, you know, 90% of the way there. It, it's close, but that last 10% is hard. Um, and so a big part of our job this semester was talking to machinists, talking to welders, uh, talking to shop technicians, you know, making sure that the parts we're designing and the project that we're making is something that can be built and that can be bu built easily. On the one hand, we're working on design, fabrication, getting all these parts made, you know, getting metal cut, getting parts 3D printed, putting things together. And on the other hand, we also had to figure out a way to actually control it. Um, a Stewart platform is not a simple thing to keep moving the way you want it to. Um, you've got six legs that all have to move perfectly in unison, otherwise it does something unintentional. And so a big part of the project has been designing control laws that will keep our platform on target, that will keep us pointed in the direction we want to point instead of somewhere else. So the benchtop model of the retro rocket is essentially intended to serve as a proof of concept for the interconnection between the VR simulation and the uh, controller of the Stuart platform. Uh, now the Arduino is encoded uh, to receive that serial input, uh, parse the data, and then uh, essentially rewrite that data in such in a way that it is reading uh, roll, uh, pitch, and heave. Angles. Make it a sim. I don't know where rocket to sim came up. I don't know if that's Eric or Jim, but it came to me as this package deal. And then Jim, I think, said, Do you think we could do this in VR? Because he knew I did the VR work. So neither of them had any VR experience. Um, I have a VR lab, but I don't do anything with flight simulators. And I said, Well, if if you can work on the mechanical engineering side, I can probably get, I mean, senior aerospace engineers should be able to put together a flight model. And some of them are probably interested in computer graphics and, and coding up a game engine um, just because of the great diversity that our student body has. So I said, I'm sure we can get somebody that'll do that. I know some of them can do VR. So we should be able to piece together a solution. Uh, so from last year's team, uh, we actually got a more or less working uh, 
flight simulator that they had uh, kind of designed the concept on, and then uh, and, and then they went and built it in Unreal Engine 4. Um, and they had all of the flight mechanics and everything working in there already. They had a drag model and and a flight model. It was actually quite remarkable what they had done. And so the flight model in the in the in the flight sim is actually what's called a pseudo physical model, uh, where it's not um, completely uh, simulating every bit of the aerodynamics and the and the forces and moments uh, created by the control surfaces. Rather, we focus more on uh, skipping right from the control input to say the rotation imparted on the on the vehicle uh, and this simplifies the design process from a coding perspective uh, it also lightens the workload on the computer so we can have a, a, a nice frame rate because that's one of the things we prioritize when working uh, with the virtual reality it's it's important to uh, mitigate motion sickness there was a lot of work to be done in the 3d modeling software that we use uh, blender to kind of optimize the assets that we were using, both for the model of the uh, retro rocket itself, uh, and, and the biggest one would be the environment. Well, I actually got a email from from Dr. Hartle saying, "Hey, I got this really cool project going on. Um, crazy story. I came across this rocket ride, uh, and he kind of filled me in on on what the goal was. And he said he wanted to do a, a first time, one of a kind um, capstone project for seniors. And I said, "Man, that sounds great." Uh, let's let's see how we can help. Um, his problem was he didn't have a, a client or somewhere to give it to. So he had the idea, uh, but not necessarily the, the customer base. So I was like, yeah, I'd love to jump in on this project. Well, certainly it started. I was very, very excited about this idea of of it rolling out of a trailer at, at a football game at Alabama and a bunch of you know young grade school kids from Alabama lining up to sit in this maroon rocket with A&M branding everywhere and aerospace engineering plastered on the side and stand in line and scream and shout and uh, some <laughs> probably throw up a few of them and some kid falling in love with flight. Um, I just, I thought that was amazing. So Sparks provided us with a uh, panel of teachers uh, ranging from elementary teachers to high school teachers. Um, and they really, provided a lot of feedback to help guide uh, the user experience pro uh, aspect of this project. The user experience group is really cool because we get to do a different type of engineering. Um, it's not really structural engineering, it's not really you know, the computer engineering that the VR group is doing. Um, what we're trying to do is make sure our shareholders' needs are satisfied. Right? Looking at the end user and we're making sure that they get a positive experience with the retro rocket system in the end. Um, and what that means is we're trying to provide an engaging uh, experience or you know, anywhere from kindergartners and pre-K up to seniors in high school, a wide age group. And I think we can really pull that off with this uh, retro rocket. It's a really cool system and it it's gonna get people excited about engineering. Once this project's completed, we plan on taking it um, all over the state. So whether that means going to various STEM expos, uh, getting kids excited about aerospace engineering or just having a cool engineering experience and, and learning quickly on the go, uh, we call them sugar rushes, but if, if we can just give a kid a quick sugar rush of engineering, we'll do that. Um, what hasn't changed really is the whole notion of uh, student engineers designing the platform, getting the, the, the rocket bolted onto the platform, dealing with the VR software and headset and all of that being implemented. So, so that really has not changed. Um, and that, that still is really good. I mean, we saw yesterday the platform getting welded together. We thought, saw everything coming together. So I, I think still it, it's a standalone demonstration of the engineering skills of the senior students. So that's what I, that, that, that's really it. It's less of a flight simulator and more of a flight experience. And, and that's a positive change based on some of the feedback we've gotten. I'm really excited to work on this project because of the outreach element. I think that that is fantastic. Um, and I'm really passionate about that. Um, I love the thought or just the idea of being able to bring something uh, that is made from engineering and shows how wonderful engineering can be to the next generation of engineers. Um, that really inspired me as a kid. And I like the thought of being able to inspire others.